Hello everyone, welcome back to Spiritual Essence. I know it has been quite some time since I've uploaded something. Uh, I do apologize. I have my moments where I'm inspired to create many, many videos, and then there are times when I am inspired to create no videos. Um, so, I am hoping to bring a good video for you, and the point of interest in this video is actually the start of an ongoing investigation that I have started on a spiritual topic that I have been wanting to know for quite some time, um, deep diving into the mysteries about the One. Now, uh, for those of you who um, may be new to this channel, I have mentioned the One before. The One is the name for the Creator God, the Creator of everything, um, the Universe. Um, how I first came to know about the One, I'm going to just uh, summarize. So basically during one of my uh, astral projections, I encountered one of my spirit guides, which was the uh, angel uh, Raphael. And I asked him some questions about life to see what answers he would give me, which um, angels are not ones to divulge too much for you, especially when it has to do with, like, the deeper things in life. Um, he, everything I asked him a question about was very vague. The answers were vague to all my questions, but, uh, when I asked him why was his answer so vague, uh, does why don't you want me to know this? And he said, it's not me. It's the one who doesn't want you to know this yet. You're not ready. And I said, the one. Is the one the God of creation, the supreme creator? And he said, yes. When I tried to ask more questions about the one, he grew silent. And I wasn't able to get any more information out of him than that. So this was the first account where I actually got some indication that the one existed. And ever since then I've been trying to find out ways that I could try and contact the one or learn more about the one. Now throughout um, the research that I've done thus far I've done research online and in books. Um, I've never came across anyone else who calls the creator the one. I typed in the one and I was unable to find any in, um, indication that it was the another name for the creator. So it's not a common name. It might be something that Raphael calls him or maybe the angels call him that us mortals don't know. Um, but throughout my research, a lot of mythologies and religions center around um, a creator god that is above all of the other gods. Like in um, Greek mythology, Chaos or Chaos is the um, what existed before creation. It is uh, the void, but it is known as a deity, but it was never prayed to. Chaos is simply part of the mythology of creation. He just is. Even though it is presented as a deity, it's also known as a force, a force that is responsible before, like, for creating the gods that uh, they know, from the Titan gods to the Olympian gods. It is the oldest ancestor of them all. 
Um, looking into Sumerian mythology, I found that Anu, he is the god of, uh, cre uh, well, I've heard different things, but from my research, he represented, um, uh, supreme power or heavenly power, much like Uranus in Greek mythology, where he was basically represented of the heavens, the sky, Father Sky. You know, you ever heard Mother Earth, Father Sky? So basically, he represents that. But there's a different, a difference between the Creator God and the one that birthed the other gods, which is. Uh, very weird. And I've tried to look at other mythologies, and every single one that I was able to find has a creator god that starts off before the other ones. So that leads me to believe that all of these past mythologies, or even uh, current uh, mythologies and religions all believe in a higher power above the higher powers they uh, they worship. Um, now, as you know, that I have prayed to a multitude of gods along my spiritual path, and um, in other videos, I do want to elaborate on all of them if I can to show you how I worship them. And to, I just want to say that just because I have the belief in a supreme creator, it doesn't um, necessarily mean that this takes away from my worship to the um, gods that exist below the one. Um, it is just all a part of me trying to find out the truth. Now, one belief that I hold dear... Now, um, I could be wrong on this one. But it is it is my belief, I just want to say. Uh, humans created gods. Uh, such as Zeus. Such as uh, Osiris. And uh, what's another... Um, God, I have a bunch of statues over here. Um, Odin. Just to name a few. We humans created these gods through storytelling. And storytelling led to the actual belief and worship of these truly fictional beings. But because of the prayers and the worship and the energy devoted to these um, mythical beings by humans, we were able to give life to them. We were able to breathe life into them. However, the one was not created by us. The one existed before us. Now, maybe the, the versions that we know of that I named earlier in the video, those are versions that uh, were created by us. I even have another name for the the one in uh, the gods that I have created, and um, the god's name is Dea. And in the drawing depicted of him, he is this black mass of stars and planets, and he's got many arms, and he is a representative of all that is, all that was, and all that will be. Now. I have no idea if the one was created by anything. In my mind, it it isn't so that this force, this being, could just be. Something has to create something. But I know for sure in my heart that we did not create the one. I could name a few theories about what I think uh, the one is or where it came from, but I'm not going to do that, at least not right now. 
Um, I don't want to get too off topic. But <clears throat> that is the belief. Something had to create the one, but that would mean that there's something that surpasses even the creator. So who is this force? Who is this being that created the being behind creation, you know? Now, some things that are obvious about the one, and a lot of the stuff that I believe about the one is not based on any evidence that I have, because this is a very unique situation. I do not possess the ability to even get physical evidence from this. There is no address to go see the one at. And um, some people who have been um, astral projectors professionally, and by what I mean by that is people who have um, astral projected many times before and have had far more vibrant experiences than even myself. Because sometimes a lot of my astral projections are vague. Um, at one point they used to be deeper, but now they're not as much because I haven't been doing it as much. But these people have um, done this pretty much professionally. Trying to find out the secrets of the universe and um, secrets about themselves that they may not have been aware of and, and things like that. Um, have come to the conclusion that there are several realms in um, the astral. The lower realms are for low vibrational beings, uh, which could mean demons, uh, sub-beings, which aren't entirely human, but may not necessarily be demonic, but other spiritual beings that exist in the astral. And... Um, Beings who may have not had the highest frequency in life, maybe who were angry, evil, or bitter people, and they didn't have um, a light enough soul to ascend to the higher realms. Now, the mid-realms of the astral are closer to this realm, the physical. Um, now, spirits can exist here, too, uh, obviously, and um, they can be both good or bad. Angels can exist here and other such beings. Um, now, the sixth level of the astral. Now, I don't know ex precisely what is in each uh, astral level because so many people have different sources about what they've seen on different levels. And you have to be at a certain frequency to go to each level. And obviously, a lot of people do not strive automatically to go to the lower realms because there are bad things there, such as demons and low vibrational human spirits. And if you linger there too long and come back to your body, you may just pick up an attachment if you allow them to. So a lot of people don't really go there. I have gone once unintentionally and I saw this hideous face with sharp teeth and scars all over it and black eyes just in my face as close as I am to the camera now. And it woke me right out of my trance and I said, um, I'm going to come back later because that, no, no, no. Um, but from what I was able to research... The sixth realm is where the gods that we created live. And this is where everything that we create lives. If we create a character, let's say, in our minds, uh, whenever they're not in this realm, they will be in that realm. If we come up with like a world, an imaginary world, let's just say as a kid, it will be there. This seems to be a realm where these high vibrational ideas can prosper and become beings with minds of their own. <clears throat> I could also uh, say that this 
could be done un uh, unintentionally by people who really get into these characters that they create maybe for movies or books. Um, let's just say for the sake of argument, Harry Potter. Harry Potter might be in that realm right now, thinking like he does in the books, because so many people have thought about him. So many people have given him attention, time, energy to create this. So this realm is where all of these... Um, Energy organisms, as I like to call them. It's the best name I've come up with so far, but where these energy organisms live. Now, these energy organisms exist so long as there is someone to believe in them. Uh, I would assume that a lot of the gods from mythologies that have been long forgotten and are not prayed to anymore, um, their energies may have persisted for a while, given the energy that they were given in their time. But over time, they would lose this energy and slowly dissipate. Um, and energy is not created or destroyed. It is merely transferred. So perhaps this energy was transferred into the newer energy organisms that have been created in modern times. Um... But there is a bountiful supply of it. Um, so this sixth one seems to be the highest one that average human souls can reach. The seventh level of the astral seems to be the location where the one exists. And the only things that exist on here besides the one is um, angels, guardian angels, or uh, spirits that have ascended and completed their, um, their journey, their spiritual journey. Because that is the point of reincarnation, to go through life and uh, learn lessons, do things right, do things wrong, learn from these mistakes, and continue on until we can become balanced souls enough to reach the one, and therefore, from what I hear, become angels ourselves to assist others in their journey until everyone has completed their journey. That is from what... I can comprehend. Um, I could be wrong, but that is uh, that is what I believe. Now, I have made multiple attempts when I uh, have done astral projection before to contact the one. And I have been unsuccessful up until uh, the last attempt that I had made. Um, and I did make a... A video about this in one of my previous videos uh, not too long ago and I was very excited when it happened and I was I was really just so overjoyed that I was able to do this and I, I came straight to YouTube and I wrote down my experience and I, I I wrote it down so that I could tell you word for word detail for detail without anything being forgotten and um, I was excited. If you guys, uh, don't know what I'm talking about, go check out that video, because, um, it's very interesting. But, uh, and I'm not gonna rehash the entire experience here, but I'm just going to say that while I didn't speak to the one directly, I spoke to someone who claimed to be a representative of him, and the one being who helped me get to that point... Uh, was Caridwen. Now, Caridwen is a Welsh goddess, but um, from what I understand, she is uh, based off a real person years ago who was an enchantress living in northern England. Uh, she had a small farm next to Bala Lake, which is um, still around. A lot of people 
go hiking there, from what I uh, understand. One day I do hope to go to see, even though her... Her home is long gone, and as for her burial spot, I have no idea where her or her family rests. Um, from what I was able to gather by asking her in the um, in the astral, that um, she was kind of seen as a bit of an outcast of society due to her nature. She was an eccentric. And, um, society didn't really see her as normal, but she seemed okay with it. And, um, she decided to take her family into the wilds and, uh, live there. <clears throat> when I went to visit her in the astral, um, I saw Bala Lake, and it was this huge lake surrounded by a bunch of trees. Her homestead was interesting. It wasn't at all what I expected. I expected to see, like, maybe a decent-sized shack for her and her family, but what I saw was completely different. It was like a tiny hut. And the roof was, like, built into the ground. There was, like, sod covering um, the roof and a hill. So it was one of those underground homes, kind of, that was built into, like, almost like a man-made hill. But it, it hardly seemed small enough to even fit her family. And when I went in there, there was a small table and these two wooden chairs. And there was... Um, Almost like a slab. It almost looked like a very small kitchen area. And on top of it was a bunch of herbs. Uh, there was a knife, probably for cutting the herbs. And there was a cauldron. And this cauldron had a very familiar symbol on it. And it was a symbol of Awen. Now, Awen is a very... Not as well talked about goddess of Welsh mythology, but she was uh, seen as a goddess of inspiration, poetic inspiration. She was known as the spark of life. And uh, bards would often pray to her so that their words and their music and their poetry would be well received, essentially. And people who prayed to her, from what I was able to research, was they were called Awanids. And Karidwin was an Awanid. How she became involved with Awan, being the person that she was, I don't know. I wasn't able to really ask her that. But when I asked her, because um, she supposedly had um, something called the Cauldron of Awen, and the Cauldron of Awen was essentially the goddess Awen in a cauldron form, and it was able to create incredible elixirs and potions from it. In one case, she spent a whole year creating this one potion, um, three drops taken by anyone would give them the power of poetic inspiration, which she hoped to give to her son who was horribly disfigured. So to make up for his lack of looks, she decided to give him this gift of poetic inspiration. Um, now I tried to get the recipe, but unfortunately I was not able to get that from her. I don't think I'm even ready for such things, but um, the cauldron took a whole year to make, and it had to, someone had to keep stirring it, no matter what, constantly. So she often had a farmhand help her, and his son help her stir it, and as she collected the ingredients. Now, it only took three drops to work, and the rest was poison. 
a very caustic, toxic poison. Three drops was the dose. Well, according to legend, she was almost finished with the potion. She had the farmhand's son continue to stir. Well, it spit back at him. Three drops went on his thumb, and he went to suck it because it was hot. Therefore, he, uh, he got the gift instead. And after that, the cauldron shattered because of the poison. And when Caridron found out, she was, she was pissed. And she tried to kill him. Uh, he would transform into one animal, she would transform into the animal that eats that animal, and so on. Until he eventually became a grain of wheat, and she became a hen and ate him. And then she eventually gave birth to him. <clears throat> so he was reborn. And when he was finally birthed from her womb, she wanted to kill him, but she couldn't. Because it was like a motherly instinct. He was now her son. So... She put him in a basket and floated him down the river to another village, and he eventually became a well-known bard. But what I don't understand about that legend is that Caridwen was able to have all these abilities and power before, you know, making this potion. So did Awen give her this power? Did she make the potion years before on herself <clears throat> it is unclear but she was known as a very powerful enchantress and from what I understand through talking to her people who uh, were from the local villages whenever they were like ill or down on their luck they would come and see her and she would help them They'd give her, like, a few coins, and she would help them out. She would make elixirs that healed the sick, and she would um, cast spells for them and such. So she was essentially a witch. Um, but when I went to see her, I made an altar on the uh, Anbala Lake in the Astral. And she came down. She was floating above the water, but her cloak... Her cloak was, it extended far longer than her own body. It was very long. Um, in her hand, she had this ball of energy and it had the symbol of Awen. And she shot it towards me and all of a sudden I felt all this energy lift me up. And I went past the atmosphere, through space and time, and all of a sudden I was in this higher realm, and that's where I met um, the representative of the one, and she helped answer a question that I had wanted to ask the one. Now, my previous attempts in the astral to contact the one, and I tried to use as much energy as I could, I meditated, I tried to use different materials like crystals, and uh, blessed candles and incense and other things that would help boost my frequency. And they've been unsuccessful. This was the only one. So, Kareebwen helped me with this, which makes me wonder who Alwyn is in, in her entirety. Um, I tried looking her up and there's not much information on her. I am currently reading a book, though. Um... Celtic Goddess of Inspiration, Caridwen, and the author is Christopher Hughes. Um, I'm not done reading it yet, obviously, to see the bookmark. <laughs> I'm not too far into it, but um, it's good so far, and this person, uh, Christopher Hughes, he goes into detail about the origins of her and... Um, who Alwyn is and how she related to the bards of the time and when did she, um, when did people lose their belief in her throughout the time uh, the one thing I will say about this book so far is that it's very wordy and um, the guy he likes to use the big words um, 
and it's it's easy to lose focus and all that but um it is good information it is relevant information and um i stopped reading it uh, a few weeks ago <laughs> but i do plan on reading it again because it is an interesting book so far and i do want to learn uh about caridwin and alwyn and frankly um i'm not sure if any of the books behind me have any other indications about Caridwen or Owen, but I tried looking them up on Google. I can I can't find that much detail about them, especially Owen. And Caridwen it's mostly legend. Everyone who every article that I read perceives her as a legend. That she didn't exist. Well, I feel that she did exist at one point. Her may her name may have not even been Caridwen. Uh, it may have been a different name. Um, but I do believe that Caridwen, the goddess, was based off a real person, a person with great power who had a connection to higher powers. I do believe she was something uh, called a sage. And that's going to come up a lot when I discuss my investigation with you guys. So I want you to know exactly what I mean when I call someone a sage. Um, a sage is a person who was born with innate spiritual knowledge more than the average person. And may even have uh, legends surrounding them about powers and gifts that were beyond uh, human control. Um... For example, Jesus, I would say, was a sage, given about all the stories and legends about what he could do. Now, I understand that he's from the Bible, and uh, without a body, there's no telling whether he existed or not. But I do believe that he did exist, and he was a sage who had access to these powers, and may have had a closer relationship to the one than most, given the fact that he did... Uh, commit to fasting and isolation which actually do help establish contact with higher powers and I do believe he had a contact with the one or as in Christianity God but um, there have been many sages throughout history I wouldn't call myself one because uh, I have much to learn if I'm not a sage right now, I may become one in time, um, but I've always had an, like a higher knowledge of spiritual topics. Um, when I started magic, I took to it very easily and right away, and while most people who started it around me were so nervous and were scared to do it, I jumped right in and I had no issues and I kept learning. And sometimes I would I would learn things I was like I didn't know them before and then all of a sudden they would just pop into my head and I felt in my heart that they were true so it's like occasionally as I move higher on the spiritual path it's like this information is redownloaded into my brain so um, if I'm not one right now I hope to become one in time someday hopefully we'll see but, um, yeah, sages have been existent throughout history, and there's there's been more than one throughout history. There hasn't been just one in every lifetime. Uh, no, there has been many. Uh, quite a few of them may have gone under the radar, or some of them may have not been as talked about, but there have been many throughout history. And um, I want to do a video about that, but I need to do some more research about... Um, the different people and the things that they've done and why I count them as a sage and so on. Um, but I, I just wanted to give you guys in detail about the start of my investigation. Who is the one? And how does Alwyn possess the ability to reach the one when the other gods and goddesses that I have contacted with 
been unable. Is Awen more than a, a human created god? Could be, because I do not know her full origins. Hopefully in this book I can get a better explanation. Once again, this is Celtic Goddess of Inspiration, Caridwin by Christopher Hughes. Um, check it out. I haven't finished it yet, but it's good so far. So hopefully it will, in time, give me some more answers that would help me in my investigation. Um, I want to know, guys, before I end the video, have you had any other experiences uh, with the one or God or a higher power such as those, either in the spirit world, through meditation, um, encounters in your daily life, and what do you think the one is, uh, and can we contact him? Any information that you guys can provide to help me with this investigation would be greatly appreciated because I am just one person trying to unravel a mystery that has been ongoing since the dawn of time and since I would assume that the one existed far before Earth even was created and quite possibly is the overseer of not just Earth but all worlds in this universe and all beings within it so when you look at it at, with, through those broader lenses that is incredible and I want to know so if you guys have had any experiences trying to find out about the creator the one let me know down in the comments section I would love to um, discuss this with you guys and find the answer Alright guys, thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to hit the bell button so you don't miss any of my future uploads. And may the one be with you.